is to be entered into thoughtfully, advisedly, and in the fear of God. Into this beautiful and holy relationship Philip and Allison now desire to enter. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon this marriage. Give to Philip and Allison a deep sense of the obligations they are now to assume, so that with true intent of spirit and love without reserve, they may pledge their loyalty sincerely and henceforth journey through life dedicated to live for each other and for you. As we ask in Jesus' name, Amen. Please remain standing, if you're able, as we sing Joyful, Joyful, We Adore.
reading out of the section of scriptures, 1 John 15, 9-12, read by Philip's sister, Lisa Dubuque. We have Genesis 2.18 and Matthew 19.4-6, read by Nathan Forstemeyer. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a help pursuit for him. Jesus Christ said, Haven't you read that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has done, let not, not man separate. Once again, please stand and join in singing of the faithfulness and truth of Jesus, in whom we may find our firm foundation throughout all of life.
sometimes you can think about marriage as music. Not a single unison tune, just the one line carrying through the melody, but, or even a discordant clash of jangled instruments, but a lively duet in which two voices keep an interesting harmony. Now, separating a little bit, there's a little bit of individuality there, got to be in marriage too. Now, moving in parallel, now converging. A beautiful song. Allison and Philip are both talented musicians. It's a, a treasure to find someone so gifted and appreciative of the other's musical talent. There are lots of musical metaphors that we could uh, look at to kind of explore this a bit. Uh, the need to keep in time, we need to keep moving together, we need to wait for each other, we uh, need to listen carefully to the other person, to be in tune, in the same key, it's no fun when you're out of pitch. I'll simply observe Allison and Phillips, what I think is your favorite musical element seems to be the whole. <laughs> Very sweet to see holding each other, and it can go on for some time. I, I hope you don't lose your love of the hold. Uh, John Regeer, a Christian counselor, recommends that a husband and wife hold each other ten minutes each day and then switch and let the other person hold you, <laughs> speaking tenderly and affirmingly to the, the little boy's heart, the little girl's heart that's sleep inside. But too many marriages have lost the song that once sparked their relationship. How do we preserve that? Why sing? Uh, I looked at different passages that talk about singing in the Bible. Why do we sing? One reason is the Lord's power. We fear Him. We trust Him. God is great, powerful. He saves us. He's to be exalted, number one. Exodus 14 is a, an account of the Israelites singing after the deliverance from Egypt. The Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. Uh, the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against them. The people feared the Lord and put their trust in Him. And Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for He is highly exalted. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Exalting, fearing, trusting God is number one. Sets the tone significantly in our marriage and extended family relationships. Because God is great. I am not the most important being alive. Maybe news to some people, but God's number one. It helps regarding humility and against selfishness, which can so undermine marriages. It means I will not try to always win the argument, but serve the other person in love. Romans 12 says, give preference to one another in honor. Also, if God is number one, our parents are no longer a dominant factor. So we just heard read, if a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, or leave to his wife, like welding. We need to cut those apron strings. It's not about pleasing your father or mother or your brother or sister anymore. Fear God. Find out what pleases him and then carefully please. Philip, I'm looking at you here. Uh, trusting him to spirit. Make him your strength and song. And we, we find this echoed at significant times throughout Israel's history. Psalm 118 again says, The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. As the New Living Translation puts it, Songs of joy and victory are sung in the camp of the godly. For marriage, I like that image of singing in the tents of the righteous. Kind of the points you to the home scene there. Uh, perhaps children gathered around the supper table, praising the Lord's goodness, even in things as simple as singing Johnny Appleseed for grace. Teach your children joy in the Lord. When you're older, they'll remind you in the rough times. really enjoy hearing Emily, Keith, and Mary practicing a song for this weekend celebration. It's uh, really touching. God's Word suggests it's good to serenade each other with songs. 
Keep the love languages flowing in your relationship. Isaiah 5. I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. Song of songs. You knew I was going to bring that in here, didn't you? There's a whole book.